Hello there YouTubers, I thought I'm going to continue my series on how to program for the old Commodore 64 or any other computer basically that used the 6502 or 6510 CPU, an old 8-bit CPU that's uh, very easy to get started with. And <clears throat> today I thought I'm going to show you instead of using an old development environment like the Turbo Sampler in Commodore 64 how you can use your modern environment like in my case the Mac OS 10.5 Leopard um, but of course you can use Windows or I guess any Linux environment uh, too uh, so I thought I'm going to show you how you get started with uh, such an environment um, so there are some components you will need and uh, first thing you should get hold of is some kind of a Commodore emulator and if you're running Windows or um, or uh, Linux uh, I recommend you to look at an emulator known as Vice. Um, the Vice is a really good emulator that uh, supports different hardware from Commodore like it uh, supports the Commodore 64, Commodore 128, some pet computers, all, all old 8-bit computers. Uh, if you're running on Leopard or Tiger in on Macintosh, I would recommend you to look at this emulator known as Power64. That's the one I use myself. Uh, it's not free. The Vice emulator is free and uh, Power64 costs some money, but it's uh, really good and it's very faithful to the old hardware. Um, it's still not optimized for the Intel CPU, but uh, frankly that, that doesn't matter since we are emulating a very old CPU it, it won't uh, it won't take any performance from your 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 MacBook or MacBook Pro or iMac or whatever I guarantee you it's a very good emulator that I like anyway <clears throat> that's the first thing you you need because you need some easy way to test out your programs uh, the second thing you need is something that's built in in an operating system on a modern PC. It's a normal text editor. Um, if you're on Windows, you can use Notepad. If you want something more fancy, uh, look for Ultra Edit or the E Editor. Um, uh, on Linux, I normally use uh, Bluefish as a code editor, and it supports uh, many different languages. Uh, it's a good editor. And again on uh, Leopard, I prefer to use an editor known as TextMate. Uh, basically, since there are lots of bundles for different computer languages, you can download TextMate. So I found a bundle done for some other assembler language for some other CPU, and I just uh, took that bundle and edited it a little, and I got a new bundle that works fine with the 6502 assemblers I get syntax highlight highlighting and so on but I could use the normal text editor in 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 come in on in leopard 2 if I had want to so that's the second thing you need the third thing you need is a program known as a cross assembler basically since you need a program that can take your source code written in your text editor and transfer it into a machine language that the Commodore 64 8-bit machine can understand and uh, there are a number of cross assemblers out there for the 6502 or 6510 or whatever 65xx CPU the one that I have chosen uh, since it uh, works on many different platforms it uh, works in DOS, it works for Linux, it works for Mac OS X is one known as DASM and just uh, but there are a number of different versions you have uh, one known as XA, one known as CC65, one known as uh, ACME there are a number of, of versions out there but I chose the DASM since uh, the documentation that comes with the ASM is really good and it's easy to get started with. Uh, whatever environment course <coughs> assembly you chose, make sure you get some kind of decent documentation with it because you normally just can't take um, the old source code from the Commodore and transfer it over to your PC and, and run it through the um, through the cross assembler since the syntax might differ a little bit many of these cross assemblers support more than one CPU and 
have a little bit of their own way on how, how the syntax should look like. So make sure you get a decent documentation. That's why I chose the ASM. And DSM has the, the source code for DSA, DASM is also available. And if uh, you need it, you can compile uh, compile the C code. You can use C compiler uh, for the DASM yourself. And that's basically what I did since the macOS version was still written for the old PowerPC. And I'm using a MacBook running on Intel. I chose to download the source code for DASM and compile it myself. Uh, okay, so do you need a cross compiler? <coughs> it's no big deal to install it. Uh, <coughs> if you never written anything for the 6502 machine language, you should uh, definitely get some kind of documentation. There are lots of it if you look through Google, um, uh, especially for the Commodore 64. Uh, there are a lot of of information get hold of <clears throat> but if you should get a good introduction I recommend you to look for this book um, either uh, as here in PDF format or you can look for it as in paper format on eBay I guess it's a book known as machine language for the Commodore 64 and other com model computers and was written by Jim Butterfield it's a really good introduction into machine code and especially into the 6502 machine code <coughs> it starts easy and it goes into more advanced code further into the book it's a good introduction <coughs> okay so this is the basic components you need um, uh, well after that you just write your code and I'm gonna show you just a very simple code here um, and that uh, generates a hello world program uh, and if you we look at the first line here that's why I said you should look for a good documentation for the cross compiler because all the lines that are uh, highlighted here are not normal code for for uh, 6502 machine language this is special instructions to the cross compiler <coughs> so the first line here for example, tells DASM that it should generate code for the 6502 CPU. It uh, can handle other types of CPUs too. And these lines here, for example, are special DASM uh, cross compiler syntax. Uh, all code below here then are normal 6502 assembler. So you write your code. Uh, let's save that code and to compile you need to go to your um, <coughs> command line environment if you're running on windows it's tools in linux or leopard you use your normal shell command line so let's uh, use the dasm here to compile up code and uh, so what i do is giving uh, at DSM, at dasm the first argument should be my source code and then the output file <coughs> and whatever course compiler you choose you should have this extension .prg that's the extension that the Commodore 64 use uh, for programs and the love flag here is uh, a flag uh, giving me some more verbose output so let's run that and bam uh, I've just generated a new program and if there had been any errors it should have shown it here so to start uh, the hello program I just double click here if you're running uh, on Windows or uh, Linux and use device you probably write something like XA64 space hello.prg so let's load the hello PRG and then hit run and here we go hello world written in uh, assembler and compiled through a cross assembler of course, using a cross assembler and, and a modern environment to uh, have other big uh, features like being able to use a version control like subversion or CVFs and so on. But this was what I'm going to show you today. So, hope you enjoy this and find this useful and hope you get started to code for yourself.